Welcome to another episode on how LoRa works with Shelly, where we discuss how to use LoRa to communicate between Shelly devices that are outside the Wi-Fi range. And in the previous two videos, we have seen how we can use uh, the this unit, which is our you know sender unit, to send information to this remote uh, Shelly, which is uh, let's say outside the Wi-Fi range, and or operate the outputs. And we have used this output to simulate how let's say we can open a gate motor, so we can uh, trigger this using a virtual push button, or which is configured for this device. And we also seen how we can uh, operate this output. Uh, which is let's say connected to garden lights and then we can use again a virtual switch uh, which is configured for this uh, you know sender device and turn the output on and off and what we are going to see today is that the communication from the like the sender Shelly to the receiver Shelly is not necessarily a one-way communication because both devices can send information to each other. So we are going to uh, remain on this, let's say, remote Shelly scenario, which is like at the end of the garden operating the gates or maybe, you know, some garden lights. But let's assume that we also want to use one of the outputs. So for example, this output uh, in order to send information back to the Shelly. So let's say this is our doorbell at the gate, which is at the far end of the garden. And then we want to send information back here so we can operate a doorbell or send a notification or turn on some lights or something like that. So in this use case I'm going to push this button so that's going to send the information back to the main Shelly and that's going to turn the, this output on for I just configured it for five seconds so maybe that can be a doorbell or a light or some other type of notification. So that's the scenario which we are going to look at today and then see how it works in the in the Shelly app and how you configure it especially in the script. So this is the first time that we are going to use both devices so the so the Shelly 1 Gen 4 which was on the left uh, and uh, so that's no longer going to be just a sender device and this is why I renamed this to the gateway so if you remember the topology that was the Shelly which is on the Wi-Fi um, within the Wi-Fi range so you can communicate with the Shelly app and with all the other Shelly devices and the 2PM Gen 4 which I used on the right that's the remote device that's the one which is not connected to the Wi-Fi. And now we have to change the script quite a bit from the previous example because uh, previously the you know the sender script only contained the functionality to send LoRa messages and the receiver device or the receiver script only contained uh, code for receiving uh, messages but now both of them are going to send and receive messages and if this is completely new to you then I've done like a first video on this whole subject where I explained the LoRa but there was a second video where I explained the uh, the you know the core functionality of the script which then I'm just going to skip for the rest of the videos because we already discussed in the second video but if I show you any of the script uh, or, or both of the script from both sides what you see now is that for each of the each of the side we have obviously we have the encryption key which has to be the same on both sides and then we also have a checksum size and we have a function which says generate checksum which is required for both the sending and receiving functionality and then I have a you know within uh, I have a, like a comment which says that these are all the receiving functions so where there is a verify message a decrypt message and some conversion functions and they are required for receiving messages and then we have LoRa functions for sending messages it's encrypting the message and some padding functions and then sending the actual message so now what you will see that if I go to the remote device and if I show the uh, code for that then it's exactly the same so the checksum the generate uh, checksum functions and the receiving functions and then also the sending functions because now with this example we need to send and receive messages uh, from both sides so that's going to be one of the biggest changes to the script but you don't really have to understand all of this uh, uh, you will find the link in the video description to all these examples and basically you just copy and paste uh, the beginning of the script to both uh, both sides and you know it's going to work the real magic actually happens for the rest of the code that uh, we started uh, you know changing in the previous videos but we are going to you know modify further today but before I go there, let me also go through some of the you know, settings for the virtual components because we are still going to use virtual components. So on the gateway device, I created a new virtual component which is called the doorbell. And this is just again another button type. 
so you can see that it's a doorbell and now because i already had a button for the gate example so this doorbell button now has the id of button colon 201 and i also put it into a group so if i go on, up on the main screen i can see there is like a doorbell and if i put the uh, if i press this one that also triggers the output because what i have also configured i created an action which basically says that if this doorbell um, virtual device is uh, receives a button push event or a single push event then i want to turn the output and i want to turn it off after five seconds and the reason i've done the actions and of course you can configure the action here but you can also configure it as a scene on the mobile app uh, that you don't have to put the actual uh, you know logic or the automation functions within the script but you the script only triggers this virtual component and with this virtual component you can do something and you can uh, you know trigger an output on a different shelly so if you go into the shelly app and if you configure a scene then uh, within in that scene you can you know trigger other shelly devices let's say another shelly which is then connected to uh, the doorbell or uh, i don't know a light or you can even set up a notification to your phone so the script is going to trigger this uh, virtual component and then with actions or scene you can do whatever you want with that virtual component so this is the the base of the settings and now we can go back to the functions so let me actually let me do the the remote device first because that's where we are going to send the signal from and because we are just going to use this output uh, to or sorry the the input button uh, just to send it over LoRa it doesn't have to operate the output anymore I have uh, decoupled this so you can see that on the on the input configuration input output settings I have set is detached so you know pressing the button no longer operates the second output because the second output we have already used in a previous example to um, turn it on and off using LoRa messages so now the input button doesn't do anything it just notifies you it creates an event within Shelly that it has been you know single pressed double pressed or long pressed and now the rest of it is actually going to happen in the script so in the script we already had an event handler uh, to receive the incoming LoRa messages and I have modified this event handler a little bit from the previous example it mostly this uh, if statement because the if statement was created with a reverse logic in the past but actually because I'm handling multiple events in this event handler I just changed the logic so basically it's still re uh, uh, listens to all the LoRa messages so the way I have modified this code it still executes all the functions that we have uh, configured in the previous videos so um, you know it receives a you know it checks whether the message has been received it checks whether the message is valid and it checks for the messages like AO that was the um, uh, the gate opening function or the BO or the BF which was you know turning the lights on and off so that is basically the same functions that we have discussed in video three and four uh, with a little bit of a modification to the to the code and now the new one that we have to listen for is uh, or the button press event so that button press event is also going to create an event here so again we have to check whether the event is an object and whether it has an info attribute and that info attribute has a component which is input colon one so that's the second um, button push button that i pushed on the one uh, or the 2 pm sorry 2 pm gem 4 so again going back to the device so this is s2 input which i'm going to use i haven't even used the S s1 input for anything but if i would uh, use that because let's say if that would be like a single uh, input device then it would be just input colon zero and we also check so that's input colon one and we also checked that the event was a single push so we are not going i mean here you can handle double push or long push as well but we are just going to use the single single push and if this happens we put a message into the console saying that uh, um, a doorbell message is being sent and we send a message c in the LoRa. so again if you remember from the previous videos i said that for all the different functions i'm just going to use different letters uh, as the first letter of the message so we don't get confused of uh, what it is so we don't have to send whole words it's just like you know one single letter 
So we send a message of C to the gateway device so it can do whatever it needs to do with that specific message. So on the gateway side, which was earlier, it was called the sender side, we already had an event handler, which was uh, uh, handling the virtual button press. And we also had a status handler, which was uh, handling the virtual uh, switch operation. Uh, so that was described in video three and four. So now we also have to add a LoRa event handler, which is going to be almost exactly the same as on the other side. So you can see where we are checking whether the event type is a LoRa. We do the decryption of the message. We check the, you know, the encryption key and everything. And then we put the same information into the, um, into the console log for debugging purposes. And then we check whether the decrypted message just contains the letter C. So this is where we know that that's the doorbell message that we received. So that's what we sent here, message C, and that's got received here in the decrypted message. And when that is received, then we are going to create a Shelly call. And uh, the, the function that we are going to call is called the button.trigger. And that's going to simulate the same event that the system would generate or Shelly would generate when you press that virtual button. And then you have to pass two information in the ID of the button. So that's 201. So if you remember in the virtual components, that was a button colon 201. So that's the ID is 201. And the even that we want to trigger is the single push. And that's it. So we issue this, um, this event and that would then internally trigger the action that we created earlier. And that's pretty much it. So now we have both of the scripts running. So I can just uh, uh, clear the console. And if I press the button again on the on this one, the 2 p.m. Gem 4, we see that a doorbell message sent and a doorbell message received. And I mean, I haven't shown you the, but the, the output was triggered and now it's already turned off because the five seconds has expired. And that's it. So the, it is very simple to what we have done in the previous examples. Uh, the communication direction is now reversed, but this really shows how you can use, uh, you know, the same two devices to send data to one to another. And it doesn't have to be one directional. You can send information to the gateway, to the remote device or from the remote device to the gateway. And again, with this modification of the scripts on both sides, we haven't used the function that we have created previously. So I take my um, phone again, just to, you know, trigger one of the, you know, the garden light functionality. So you can see it's uh, the virtual switch is still there in my app. So if I turn it on, then you can see that the, the message was sent and uh, the output is now turned off. Oh, I have a little bit more logging uh, shown here, but if I change the view, then you can see that this output is actually on. Let me turn off the light. So this output is on. And if I trigger the same uh, virtual button on the phone, it sends a new message and the output has turned off. And we still have the other direction as well. So the door message is sent, the doorbell is activated and it has turned off. So communication working both ways between the gateway device and the remote device now. And that pretty much concludes this uh, particular scenario. As usual, you will find the example code for both the gateway device and the remote device in the video description. And I still have a couple of ideas how we can create more scenarios with this LoRa and Shelly setup. So stay tuned for that. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next one.